so thank you very much for the for the invitation. I'm I'm uh, I'm, I'm enjoying the, the 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 discussions very much, um, and I feel a little bit like a like an outlier here, and and that uh, I I uh, so 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 John Marco kindly uh, um, asked if I would talk a bit about about the sort of data infrastructure in the context of of uh, liquid simulations and and and, uh, and soft matter. Um, they are sort of they broadly sort of uh, work with the same types of tools, and so and so it's it's easy to uh, sort of combine them and 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 sort of talk about them in the same type of of, uh, of scheme. Uh, what's a bit sort of unfortunate in the context of this workshop is that there hasn't been uh, quite as much going on in the context of data infrastructure uh, as as in as in hard condensed matter and material science, and so and so the the progress has been a lot uh, more a lot slower and more difficult. Um, because we work with other types of tools um, because of certain constraints. So I'll, I'll, I'll sort of walk you through, I thought I'd, I'd, I'd try to walk you through um, different types of um, uh, attempts at, at, at going at, a, at, a, at high throughput molecular simulations uh, in the way that, that, that people have very successfully been able to do high throughput, uh, say, DFT calculations in, in, in material science uh, trying to really do the the equivalent, um, the equivalent calculations, which which for me would be sort of the the, the entry point to to populate uh, databases and then and then start talking about data infrastructure uh, of of, um, um, of of molecular simulations. Um, and so and so a lot of what uh, we 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 work with, with with liquids and soft matter has to do with molecular dynamics. Uh, so MD is molecular dynamics, and so this is a very old method, started in the, in the 1960s or so, 50s, 60s, uh, going all the way from very simple liquids, uh, working with hard spheres, uh, increasingly adding details in chemistry, going to water, and then and then here I'm showing a couple examples of of uh, simulating proteins. You can see how uh, in the last few decades we've we've increased uh, the 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 time scale at which we can simulate these uh, these these systems. Uh, going from picoseconds all the way to milliseconds here of a of a of a protein solvated in water, um, and so so molecular dynamics means we're we're solving Newton's equations of motion. That the main sort of characteristic here is that we're working with a collection of of uh, of configurations of snapshots, and and then this this entire then config of, of configuration space then then is is um, is useful for us then to to uh, to uh, to compute say from a dynamic or kinetic properties. Um, and what sort of we have in mind is is to is to sort of establish some sort of an equivalent of 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 of, of these um, DFT based databases that, that 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 have been coming up uh, recently in the field. I, I, I took I took this one as an example, the QM9 database for for small molecules uh, from DFT calculations. Uh, the question is, what what would you have to do in order to 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 do something similar um, uh, from molecular simulations? Um, and there is there's a number of sort of steps that are required that 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 um, that involves a certain amount of automation that I think are um, sort of ongoing but that are still not completely um, um, reached yet, um, not completely satisfying, and so it's still pieces that we're working on to improve uh, the 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 state of affairs. And so that has mostly to do with, with parameterizing force field. And, and, and if you want to do this in a high throughput way, you have to automate it completely. Um, and even though force field parameterization tends to still be very, uh, very much of a manual type of uh, handcrafting exercise, um, initializing your system automatically as well, so preparing your sample and then, and then, of course, one ingredient that's that's a, that's a concern in, in MD is is uh, is is sampling or converging your calculations to an extent that that you can you can uh, you can trust your your results. Um, and so all of these ingredients then are sort of required to then to then get to a to a point where we can talk about high throughput molecular simulations. And then the output, of course, would be working with databases and then, then doing something interesting with these databases. But so I'm, I'm so um, I'll talk less about this. Um, so first of all, the system preparation. There's been a number of uh, schemes that have been uh, that have come up over the years to try to uh, prepare samples 
uh, without having to do this by hand, so sort of in, a, in an automated way. Um, the, the very useful, the simplest of, of, uh, of, of scripts is, is called PacMol, which allows you to generate simple liquids. It even allows you to build interfaces of liquids. Um, in the context of uh, biomembranes or lipid membranes, there's been several scripts to, to uh, initialize these membranes. So this is an example of a lipid membrane uh, next to a, to a membrane protein here. And, and uh, so this is a script to, to then um, initialize this for, for atomistic simulations. Uh, there's been something similar at the coarse grain level, also sort of placing grids of lipids and, and as an initial structure then to be run for, for MD. Um, and this, this makes it very easy to, for both these makes it very easy to prepare uh, sort of, of lipid membranes. Um, and then examples in the more in the soft matter community, uh, there's a recent uh, sort of uh, software suite called MOSDEF uh, that's been used to prepare um, a, this is an example of, of sort of going, sort of uh, looking at screening across compositions of, of, these, uh, of these lubricating films and looking at the rheology. I'll, I'll come back to this in a, in a couple slides. Um, and then postdoc of mine worked on a, on a, on a, on a script to also on a, on a sort of Python based object oriented toolkit to, uh, to, uh, to generate sort of fairly complex uh, soft matter architectures. These are uh, sort of, these are ordered arrays of nanoparticles with uh, grafted DNA chains. Um, and then comes force field parameterization. So that, that means sort of um, describing all these, uh, all the, all the interactions um, of, 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 of the molecules on, a, on, a, on an empirical force field. Uh, that's typically done in a, in a very non-systematic way of, of uh, basically having tables of atom types and then, and then typing in all these atom types. Um, and, and, and there's very long lists of, of these different um, atom types and parameters. There's typically thousands and thousands of, of these parameters. Um, there's been efforts at automating the, 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 the sort of the choice of these atom types and the parameters given, say, uh, say a, a, a small molecule. I'm, I'm showing a few examples here for, for these uh, well-known and established um, um, biomolecular force fields. Uh, but these, these remain sort of so these these are impressive sort of uh, um, sort of endeavors to try to automatically parameterize uh, small molecules. This is very very difficult uh, given the, the the sort of very large number of parameters they are. Um, there's been sort of more recent approaches to try to change a little bit the, the way we think about this. Uh, going from atom types to um, smirks patterns, which are a little bit like um, a little bit like uh, smile string, so, so sort of more of a fingerprint method to try to detect uh, chemical groups uh, in, a, in a molecule. And this is, this is from the open force field community. Um, and then one, one, of course, one question that's been asked in the last few years is whether we could use machine learning to just replace the whole thing. Um, and that's not easy for, for reasons that we don't have a, an easy mapping from, say, um, quantum chemistry calculations to, to these empirical force fields for um, because because of, of technical reasons, um, but so the, there's been very impressive um, early developments in, in, in using machine, machine learning to to fit potentials. Uh, so I'm sh here again. I'm showing a few examples. This is from um, uh, this in, in material science. So for small molecules in the gas phase, though, uh, fitting kernels very efficiently. And this is a, a, an excellent water model from a many body decomposition. So could we do this also for biomolecular systems and, and, and soft matter systems? Um, one, one aspect that's not so clear is how to uh, get long range interactions in and that's sort of not really a problem that's solved yet. Um, one attempt we've had with, with this is that we, we took a sort of a conventional force field and then used machine learning only to fit the parameters. So not, 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 not having a completely uh, fully flexible functional form using machine learning, but, but only using machine learning to sort of fit the prefactors of the coefficients. Um, and that allowed us to sort of learn across chemical space so that you could just pick a molecule and then the machine learning would, would uh, interpolate across chemical space and, 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 give you, uh, and give you adequate parameters. That worked really well in the gas phase. Um, what's, what's, what's nice about this is that you only need seven parameters instead of the thousands you typically need. Um, there's still work to be done to transfer this in a condensed phase, and so this is still um, 
we're, yeah, there's still very much work to be done there. Um, all right, so, so in the context of, of establishing more of, a, of an end-to-end, of an end to end uh, uh, sort of high throughput molecular simulation scheme. I wanted to go back to this MOSTEF um, example. What they did with, is that they took, uh, so they look at, at lubricating monolayer films. Um, so they took these, 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 these small alkanes next to a silica surface, and then they changed the chemistry of, of, the, of, the, um, of the N groups and, and sort of very, very systematically changed the chemistry and then also changed the chain, the, 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 the chain length. Um, so they had an interesting sort of Python script to, to build these automatically. They also have a very nice sort of um, atom typing scheme in which um, their um, atom types um, have, so they, they use these XML um, sort of um, tags to uh, assign atom types. And you can see here that this, is, this even has this Merck's pattern for the, for the chemical group. Um, a description and also interestingly the DOI of the paper from which the the the, the parameterization comes from. I found this very neat. Um, and so in the end, what they can do is once they have this thousand or so MD simulations they ran, what they did is is to is to do some um, QSPR analysis, so taking a large number of descriptors and then trying to fit them uh, as much as they could to the to properties of interest. Um, but this was sort of an interesting end to end uh, end to end um, application of a of a high throughput molecular simulation. Uh, that was shown recently. Um, in another field, in, in the field of membrane proteins, there's been interesting work in, in uh, sort of starting from the PDB structures. So the PDB is an online repository of, of uh, crystal structures of proteins. These are typically experimentally determined. Uh, I mean, these, these are basically always um, experiment, experimentally determined uh, crystal structures. What they did is, is to uh, model them using a, a coarse grain resolution, so a coarse grain model. Um, and then ran simulations to equi equilibrate a, a lipid membrane around this. So you can see here, this is a starting point, and then they run quick coarse grain simulations to equilibrate a membrane. And then they back map this to an atomistic resolution. And so this provide them with a, with a snapshot of the, of the same protein, but embedded in, in the membrane, which is typically not something you can resolve from experiments. And then interestingly, they connected this to external um, databases um, of, 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 um, of protein structures that contain other types of metadata, such as um, protein families, protein groups, um, and connected, connected them such that in the end, what they have is a, is a database on the web server of their own, which connects the PDB information from proteins and groups that they, that they extract from sort of sister databases, and then these these atomistic structures that they generated. So I think this, this is a, and th this is an example of a of an atomistic structure they 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 generated, um, and and this is sort of the family of a family of of, of uh, transmembrane proteins they 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 generated here, and they did about three thousand of those or so I think from 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 the time the paper was published. Um, our take with this was also to look at, uh, to work with coarse grain models. Uh, the way we use it is that we, we use this type of resolution because it, it has a tendency to, uh, or it has a, the chance to reduce the size of chemical space. That, that means that there's a lot of molecules that are um, chemically similar uh, that end up being res uh, not being resolvable at the coarse grain level. And so they end up being mapped to the same uh, representation, which which introduces a degeneracy in, in 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 chemical space, and we use this at our advantage in the in the sense that um, we only have to run this one simulation to make an estimate for all these molecules, and the ratio is not five to one or so, but it's something like ten thousand to one. So we can really reduce uh, um, significantly the, the the size of chemical space we have to we have to screen um, to 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 sort of sample across a certain chemical space. Uh, to give you an example of how we do this, we, we take a, a certain subset of chemical space. These are drug-like small molecules. We project them using this coarse grain model on, on some sort of a hydrophobicity axis. Um, we run molecular dynamic simulations with enhanced sampling for, for each one of these coarse grain um, molecules, um, from which we can compute free energy profiles. And then from that we can we can get a, a property of interest. So in this case, we're interested in the in the in the in the permeability of a small molecule crossing a lipid membrane, which is something that's that's um, very expensive to get from atomistic simulations. Um, so this this doing this allowed us to to um, to do this process for 
um, um, actually with a, with a very small number of simulations, about 100 simulations, we could make estimates for about half a million molecules. So this is something that's very efficient. Uh, and in this sense, it's very different from the high throughput DFT type of, of, of scheme where you first have to do the calculation and then sort of simplify or, or, or project down your data. Here we first project and then we do the calculations. Um, this allows us to, to um, generate a lot of data for these for these thermodynamic properties. So we've, we've, we've tried to um, um, share uh, as, as much as we could. So we've, uh, we've shared a number of these um, free energy profiles and, and drug membrane permeabilities for, for about a million molecules uh, by now. And we've also started trying to share the molecular dynamic simulations we use to run the calculations. Um, this is about 15,000 simulations. Um, that's, of course, uh, right now very unsatisfactory from the perspective of, of data infrastructure in the sense that um, so the data is freely available, but unfortunately, it's just a, it's basically just a, 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 a zip file with a folder with, with all the trajectories in the, in the output format of the, of, the, of the simulation package. So we don't, we don't have sort of a very clever metadata or ontology for, for the simulations. And so this is something that's, that's uh, very much uh, left to do. And I think that will open up the perspective to then, to then later on sort of build force fields also in a data-driven way. If you have sort of repositories of, of uh, uh, starting from, from um, these, 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 these liquid simulations, you could open up to, to building new force fields from these uh, coarse grain force fields from, from, from this data. Um, and that's something to be, uh, to be, to be explored. All right, so on, at the end, I, I think there's still a lot of work to be done to, to reduce the, a lot of the handcrafting that's done to prepare, parameterize, and analyze molecular dynamic simulations. I think that's one reason why, why these, uh, a lot of the um, materials informatics hasn't caught up as much in the, in the soft matter and the biomolecular community. Um, the other uh, aspect is, is that the, the data infrastructure for molecular dynamics is, is still not there. So, so we, we suffer from having large data files, collections of snapshots, uh, something that's still a little bit difficult to, to, to play with and, and requires a bit of um, adaptation from what's been developed in, in, the, in the hard condensed matter and, and, and material science. But I think there's a lot we can, we can also learn from and, and, uh, and use. Uh, all right, so I'd like to thank um, a number of people in my group who, who did the work and funding, and I'd like to thank you for your attention.